Well, we're here today to talk about an exciting new uh, book in the, uh, the rural criminology publishing space. Uh, this is the first in the Bristol University Press uh, Research in Rural Crime series and uh, titled Rural Transformations and Rural Crime, International Critical Perspectives in Rural Criminology. We have contributions in the book from key writers in rural criminology. And equally, we have some early career researchers making excellent contributions uh, to this volume. In addition, we have colleagues like myself who came later to rural criminology in their careers. So I think overall, we have a really good lineup uh, of contributors. And it really is a who's who of rural criminology. Well, Matt, our Rural Transformations, Rural Crime book is finally uh, out, hot off the press. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, the origins of the book? How did it come to be? Uh, the book comes, I suppose, on a rising wave in the growth of rural criminology in recent years. And it, it comes about, I suppose, because there's a need to uh, have a series of mid-length monographs to showcase the breadth of topics that criminologists are working on in relation to rural topics. This presents uh, us with a chance to present the state of the art in rural criminology uh, and also research on aspects of rural crime. And the need for this book in particular is to create some conceptual start points for the series, uh, for those coming new to the field, uh, those who are not familiar with rural criminology. Uh, but wish to embark on it or look at a rural topic uh, as part of their ongoing research. We felt it necessary to have a collection of essays that lays down some relevant and important theoretical underpinnings. So this book is a collection of contributions from top criminologists in the field. And we hope then that it will be the basis for uh, early and mid-career criminological scholars uh, to be able to make uh, and take up the empirical challenges that are presented to us. The one thing that I really like about this book, in particular, if I have to single out two of the chapters, it's sort of the uh, the impetus for future future work, for future direction, for further activity in the in the rural criminal space. And if I had to choose those two chapters. Um, that do just this. It's uh, uh, Vania Sakato's chapter, 15 Reasons to Care. Why should we be caring about this in the first place? And Joe Donamire's chapter, where he identifies all those theoretical and empirical gaps. And really, it's a call to arms. You know, who out there uh, has something to contribute, something to add, whether it's theoretically or empirically, to better understand crime and offending and victimization in rural spaces most importantly the criminal justice responses to what can we do about it the so what part of of criminology i think one of the one of the contributions of this book is to begin to think about developing criminological theory from rural studies much of theorizing to date has been based upon the urban you might think of the contribution for example of the chicago school uh, who've left us such a very rich legacy. Uh, but at the same time, generalizations are made based on rural cases. Uh, and the same has been true uh, in many other traditions within criminological theory. But I think in this book, we ask the question, how might we use rural empirical research and rural cases uh, to generate criminological theory? We think about the rural in idealistic terms, that it is a preserved space and impervious to social change. And I think in this book, we suggest that this is not a safe assumption. And one of the ways in which it's tackled is in a piece by myself and Arthur Pitlash, where we argue that the, the rural is penetrated by late modern society, just as much as the urban. We see that in patterns like commuting, for example people living in rural areas, not necessarily originating there, but commuting to uh, 
centers of production uh, where they find work. And we draw on the example of Ireland, which is one of the most globalized societies in the world, where the rural has been transformed by this. Um, and that the, the spatial patterns begin to reflect a more globalized picture. Uh, we show also that the rural uh, has been transformed and is often manifested in greater anxiety and insecurity reflected in practice of security governance that are practiced by rural people in everyday life. Some of our contributors take up the theme of rurality and spatial theory. This is an important dimension of the rural because it builds on the idea that the rural is uh, regarded in different through different lenses if you like yeah so for example you might think of rural as abstract space as physical space but also as relational space and the latter is very important there because it really is to do with how people live their lives and uh, uh, carry out their uh, everyday relationships uh, uh, in local communities uh, uh, around around the globe changes in how the rural is seen at the abstract level then can lead to uh, states beginning to reorganize it and it, that in turn can have an effect on the relational space both suzanne stembecka and andrew wolf in their chapters uh, look at these issues um, through the lens of changes in rural policing uh, the way in which rural policing is organized is going to have an effect on how rural people carry out their everyday lives, and especially in the way in which they relate to policing. We have a most interesting contribution in the book from distinguished professor Rob White, and Rob deals with the issue of criminology in the epoch of the Anthropocene. In the rural context, environmental crimes are often uh, missed because they take place away from the gaze of centres of regulation. And in this context, the rural is most vulnerable as we do not see what is out of sight and out of mind, as he suggests. Similarly, Walter de Cesaretti takes up this idea uh, when he writes about violence against women in rural spaces. Rural areas are more patriarchal and perpetrators of domestic abuse are integrated if you like into male networks uh, and again this takes place very much on an out of sight and therefore out of mind context. One, one of the key issues about studying uh, the various factors of criminal justice and criminal justice responses when we're thinking about these matters geographically is this notion of out of sight and out of mind and probably you know a, a really startling example of that is the sighting of prisons you know as the cities have uh, have have grown uh, and the values of land have increased then there's a tendency to find the cheaper land outside of the city in the in the suburbs and beyond that but it's not just an economic imperative. There's also that notion of let's let's get these people, lock them up, but get them away from society. We don't want to have to um, have to uh, access their 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 visibility, uh, and that notion of access as well extends beyond that. The access of family, friends, loved ones, supporters, uh, other agencies visiting prisoners. It's incredibly difficult, particularly in countries such as Australia, the United States, other big land masses where the distances are so immense, no public transport options, a whole range of other deficiencies in service provision. And we can think as well around a whole heap of those other uh, access to justice issues for when prisoners are released. Where do they go? Where are their support networks uh, after they've been imprisoned? So the chapter from uh, myself, Rachel Hale, and Cole Mile Rooney explore and unpack some of those issues, as well as thinking about the um, uh, this notion of punitive populism too. So, how supportive are rural communities of having prisons um, in their in their communities? And the chapter unpacks a few of those issues and and provides some examples too. We can use theories that have been mostly applied in urban contexts and then reapply them in the rural and then reflect on 
what that does for the theory in general. Now, for example, in his contribution, James Wendell looks at farm crime in rural Ireland through the lens of left realism. And left realism uh, was developed for looking at how crime would be, could be dealt with in urban working class areas. So uh, to take this approach in to rural context, James has in effect helped to develop the theory himself by uh, bringing a new way of looking at the rural, uh, and, but also extending the theory into new contexts.